In this video, all y'all are gonna level up your photography with five of my favorite compositional techniques. My name is Pi, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up friends? My name is Pi. Welcome back to Adorama TV. It is wonderful being here with you all. Let's dive straight in. So the first compositional technique that I want to discuss is framing your subject over the shadows, particularly when you have a backlight. I'm going to show you why. So first, I want you to take a look at this shot. This is of my friend David Sa, and you guys probably recognize this from the behind the scenes video that we did in posing techniques for men, right? Well, one of the things going on here is I want you to pay attention to how his entire, like this entire scene is being backlit, but his head is tilted to the left just over this darker kind of fountain object, right? So we see the head kind of half in front of this dark object and half in front of the brighter sky. Now, oftentimes when we have our subjects backlit, we kind of wonder, well, at least I wondered when I was first starting out, why aren't my backlights showing up? And it's because the backgrounds are too bright. And if we actually zoom in on David's head, uh, David, you have a lovely face. I'm sure everybody loves looking at it. So I'm not, I'm not worried about zooming in. Okay. But you can see how the hair light stands out on this side versus on this side. It really just kind of blends in with the sky. We barely notice anything. So let me show you what that looks like in practice. This was kind of just the, the idea of what we're talking about and what the difference is, right? In practice, it looks like this. So here, the sunlight is obviously coming into the scene. And as you guys can see from where I'm shooting, I'm shooting at a higher position compared to my couple. So what this allows me to do is actually frame them below the horizon line. So I can frame them within this darker area of the background. And because of that, you get this beautiful kiss of light. And I do say kiss because it is so soft, so subtle, this lovely, Arizona light over Brook and Berry in this photograph. It looks awesome. So that's it. In summary, number one, frame your subjects over a darker background when you want that backlight to really pop. All right, so let's go to number two. Now, perspective is one of my favorite compositional techniques because it's a very simple and easy way of taking something very ordinary and turning it into something quite extraordinary. In fact, Case in point, this shot of Shiv, I know it looks like we're in some sort of fancy studio, but as you'll see from the behind the scenes video, we are literally in the back of our studio parking lot. We're in a warehouse area. And the difference between this shot versus what you're seeing is simply me getting down the ground and shooting up towards Shivani. Now at that point, I'm also using a wide angle lens. So we're using a 16 to 35 millimeter lens and I have it set to 16 millimeters. And this was actually shot on a Sony, I believe, probably the A7R4. But any wide angle camera works. You'll find that on my TikTok on Born and Creative, I'm actually doing this technique a lot with just my phone. You guys have wide angle lenses on your phones. You can do the exact same thing. So get down low and have your subject interact with the camera. So here, Shiv is kind of dancing, moving, bringing the hands into the camera, and we pop this shot. I'm focusing on her eyes and letting the hands kind of go out of focus at F5. Perspective is the only thing that's making this shot interesting. Same thing when we go back to David's shot. So we showed some of these images in that posing tutorial, right? What makes this image unique, what makes it look better than it would is if you remember the before, in fact, I'll have our editing team throw in the before so you can compare the before versus the after. Obviously, we've changed the pose a bit, but really what's happening here is on top of the pose, we've shifted the camera angle down low. And this adds a unique perspective, allowing David to kind of tower over the frame, creating a really great presence in our kind of subject to camera interaction. So perspective is a wonderful tool and it's so powerful a tool that photographers, many photographers specialize just in this one compositional technique. Okay, let's go on to my next favorite. This is negative space. Now I don't actually have behind the scenes for this shoot. Um, so let me take you guys first before we do this one. Let me take you first to this shot right here. 
So this is my friend, Buddy, who I met when shooting Strangers. He, he's, I actually just met him that day. And uh, he's a street performer in Pasadena. And I, I, I met Buddy and I was like, can I take your portraits? He agreed. And I shot him against kind of a little bit of a, a white wall. And I'm actually gonna show you guys this. The original shot was this right here. Oops, I think it's this one. It's right there. So I just framed him against that white space on the wall because I knew that once I edited the image, I could actually just pull it into Photoshop and extend the wall up and create this unique kind of negative space framing. What I love about negative space is it's the empty space around the frame that draws our eyes to the subject. They're very powerful compositional techniques when it comes to advertising and other types of medium where you wanna use for website design because you have so much room for copy. On top of that, I find them absolutely awesome in print because there's something about just the simplicity of negative space photographs that I really appreciate and enjoy. Now this shot, so I grew up in Utah and we had the Great Salt Lake and attached to it is the Bonneville Salt Flat. Now the shoot that you're seeing is not this shoot. I actually don't have behind the scenes from the shoot, but you can see kind of the landscape and you can find these sort of puddles that are fairly large, but they only have like one to two inches of water where people can stand on them and they essentially look like they're floating on water. The thing is that most of us don't have access to the Bonneville Salt Flats, right? So I want you guys to see what negative space looks like in a very simple kind of scene. And also when looking at this one, I want you to keep in mind that really any puddle can look like this if you bring the camera down to the ground. So once again, if you add perspective to this concept of negative space, you can really do a lot with it. So negative space is awesome. I love the way it kind of just brings our attention right into our subject. Fantastic little compositional tool. The next one, our fourth one is natural framing. This is looking into your background for an element, for a shape that can naturally frame your subject. Now in this scene, as I was shooting Kylie, I actually have a small light that you'll see in the behind the scenes that we're using to light her. I think this is part of our lighting three or lighting four series on SRL Lounge. Now what interested me about this particular shot and angle was the way that the light was coming in from this backside window. See, this backside window acts as a natural framing element for Kylie's face. So I framed her right in front of this and then we have this kind of light on this side, we have light on this side and this great balance to the frame and I'm kicking a little bit of light right into her face. But it's that central kind of window frame that really draws us in and holds us into our, our subject in this shot. Now here I did something very similar for this editorial doctor's portrait, right? So in this entire scene, and I shot this actually completely by myself, uh, there's a separate video on this that I did on what it's like to kind of shoot in a post-COVID era by yourself in a medical facility shooting a, a doctor's portrait. So you guys will have to check that out. But here I'm doing the exact same thing with this window in the background. So I actually left the blinds a little bit open. In fact, if I show you some of the other shots in this scene, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So let me go up to the other. Okay, so if you look at these three images, you'll see that I left this blind semi open because I loved how the light right behind him was sort of just holding us right on him. So we can use that same sort of framing element in many different ways. Now here, this is two examples of just a window, right? But you can find framing elements in every background. And this is one of those things that I would really encourage you to take your time and when you frame your subjects, incorporate the background into that framing, okay? The last one that I wanna talk about is leading lines. So let's talk about the first one. This one, is a very not so obvious use of leading lines. This actually came from our Lighting 3 workshop. And what I'm doing is I'm setting up a, a pretty crazy backlight on them. I think we have two flashes right behind them to really highlight them. And I actually did a double exposure. So what you're seeing here, if you're seeing the behind the scenes, is I'm actually photographing inside of a parking lot, just the lamp that kind of goes down into the frame. And I'm like, you know what? All I gotta do is find a black background. I can take a shot of this use this as my double exposure, find a black background and backlight my subjects. And then just in camera, you select double expose and you can choose the two frames. So this is an in camera double exposure. But this is not as obvious of a leading line as others. We run into leading lines on a daily basis constantly, right? So here's a very simple one. So this shot, I'm out with David Sa actually shooting strangers in Santa Monica. 
and we come across a group of, of young, awesome, uh, I'm gonna call them kids because I'm 40 and they are much younger than that. So we come across this awesome group of young adults and, uh, and I wanted to get this shot that had all these kind of lines sort of leading into this beautiful expression of hers. So as she's looking out, I'm using the rails to kind of lead into her. Now that's one usage of leading lines, but even in this shoot itself, I actually did another one. Uh, let's find it right here right here, where all we're doing is getting down low. You can see how in this shot, we have these bars that are dropping straight across the frame uh, while the lines are leading into them. So these bars kind of create this nice little framing element for our subject while the lines of bringing the camera down low, shooting on a wide angle, leads us directly into the person that we're photographing. Now composition is one of those things that I can go on for days about. I'm not gonna do that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you learned something, if you appreciated it, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, turn on notifications as well because I'm back here every week. I'd love for you guys to be notified of new videos in addition to all the awesome creators that are on this channel. In the meantime, you can follow me at Born Uncreative on TikTok as well as at Pygersa on Instagram. And uh, well, I'll see you guys back here same time, same place on Adorama TV. Peace.